this afternoon we will uh, study various names of Babylonian gods. Each religion has their own gods. It is uh, their tradition that they have Although the same God bearing different names uh, in terms of uh, the functional differences by function, you know, even our God here, Jesus, uh, in terms of uh, functions, we have different names, you know, Savior, uh, sometimes a King. Priest, high priest, even creator, even the same Jesus name bearing various functional names uh, attached. Uh, in the same way, Babylonian religion has many different names which cause confusion among us, particularly during the time of uh, Greek Empire and Roman Empire time, people in those empires had all kinds of different names of Babylonian God. Okay, I have I have written those different names here in my book called the Origin of Religion. In my book, Origin of Religion, uh, I compiled all these different names in way of uh, making table here. So I'm going to give you briefly how I did it, okay? Now here, Greek Empire and Roman Empire Greek and Roman Empire, the god Nimrod. Nimrod has different names under the during the time of a Greek Empire. Nimrod, Greek Empire called Jews. It's a very famous name, you know, Jews. Okay, and it's Roman Empire, same Jews, it calls Jupiter. That meaning is a, is a governing, it's a Governing God or controlling, controlling God, meaning governing and controlling universe. Okay, universe. The highest name, Jews, in the Greek, in the Roman Empire, is called Jupiter. Okay. That is, you see, this is, uh, uh, you know, star name Jupiter? Okay. This is a Jupiter star. It's a star. Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter is also 
Jupiter is Thursday. The, the, the Thursday. It's a Thursday today. You know, in a week is a Thursday. Thursday, they call it Jupiter. That's the star name. All the, the same connotation, same meaning. So, Monday through Saturday, Sunday, so all it comes out of the Babylonian system. That we are now under the influence of Babylonian system. Okay? Now, same name, Nimrod. And the Greek people call Apollos. You have heard Apollos. Okay? Yeah, Apollo. In Roman's name, same, Apollo. Roman's name, Apollo. That's the meaning is, that's a, that means it's a music, poem, even prophecy, even healing. All comes out with this, Apollos. That Apollos star meaning it is sun. So that means it's Sunday. It is Sunday is Babylonian Apollos. And thirdly, T R T O N I S O S. Dionysos, Dionysos, Dionysos. Dionysos in Romans Bacchus in in Bacchus it's a you know Bacchus it's alcohol. Al- alcohol drink. Hmm? Yeah. Dionysus is a Greek. And Romans calls Bacchus. You know, a Korean uh, Bacchus. You know, that it's it's power drink. Yeah, yeah. Same. Dionysus. It all comes out of Nimrod. Okay? Now, one more. As Q La Pius. As Kula Pius. It's the same here as Kula Pius. As Kula Pius, it means his medicine. Medicine God. So remember at least those four names. Okay, four different names indicating Nimrod. Okay, here. Now, Semiramis. Semiramis. Semiramis has many names here. Yeah. Greek, Romans, and meaning, and stars. Semiramis, 
Number one is, in the Greek word, it's Athena. In Romans, it calls Minerva. Minerva. That meaning, wisdom, art, even tradition. That's okay. That's wisdom, art, Minerva, Athena. Many uh, you English-speaking Filipinos, we are using all these names because it's all um, deeply inside of Western culture, even Eastern cultures. Now, number two is Aphrodite. 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 That is in, in here in, in Romans is a Venus. That's all feminine, okay? This is a love, a lovely lady. That's a Venus. Lovely lady and lovely female God. Okay? Venus. Venus. Venus, it, under the star, is a Friday. That's a, also, it's a Lucifer. And Isaiah 14, 12. We use a lot of Venus. Okay, that's all symbolizes Semiramis. Now, three, Artemis. You know, you know in the, Artemis is, it's, it, it's the Bible here. In the Greek, is Artemis. Artemis is, in the Roman language, is Diana. You know Diana name, lady's name. Okay, Diana is in Italian language is Artemis. That's a moon god. It's a moon god. This is a Monday. This is a meaning. It is a moon god. Moon god. Diana. Number four. Demeteru. Demeteru. This is a keres. Keres. This is a goddess of Goddess of farming is farming. Farming god. Goddess, a female god. You know, in our food, it's a breakfast, so you have a cereal with the milk. Okay? We said we, we eat cereal in the milk. Cereal, it comes out of the carrots. It's a farming, crop, crop. Number five, and Hera. And here in Romans, it's Juno. It's a meaning noble woman. This is a this meaning, wife of Jews. 
meaning Hera is a wife of Jews. Do you remember the Jews there? Hmm. And here, Nike. In the Roman language, it's Victoria. The goddess of, goddess of victory. Who gives you victory? You know, we have running shoes, Nike, okay? It all comes out of here. All these names are very much available around the world. That shows us these Babylonian gods and Babylonian religions are under, are deeply penetrated in our culture, in our language, in our society, in our even financial system, political system. All these Babylonian gods and Babylonian cultures are deeply involved in our daily life, uh, in the areas of politics and economy and society, even culture, even in religion, even in religion. Okay. Now, on Tammuz, here in a Greek in Romans. In the Greek, it's done with the Hermes. This is a romance, is a Mercury. That is a meaning commercial. Mercury, commercial. Okay, and that is uh, uh, stars. That is, uh, uh, you know, the star name is Mercury. That's the Wednesday. That's a Mercury star. That's a Wednesday. And Number Saturn. Saturn. So same as Saturn. That's also farming. Now it who is a Saturn? Which which star? Star is Saturn. That's it's a star name. Okay, that's a Saturday. It's a farming day, Saturday. And Poseidon. In the Roman language, called it a Neptune. Neptune. That's an ocean, sea. It's a star, is Neptune, Neptune star. And also, Ares. That's a, in, it's a Mars. This is a military. That's a star name is 
This is a Tuesday, Tuesday. That's a Mar. It's, it's just one of the stars name here. Okay, and one more. Eros. You know, erotic and eros, it's a love, okay? In Roman, people call Cupid. You see, because that's why we have a heart here and then arrow, you see? With the heart. And you have an arrow here, remember that? That's a Cupid. And that means it's a love. And it says that he is the son of Aphrodite. Where is Aphrodite? You're right, Aphrodite. Yeah. The Eros, Cupid, whatever. You see here, various names uh, in the Babylonian, in the Babylonian gods here. Okay, you may notice that all these names are okay, affluent, prevailing all over our society. Especially English speaking and Greek speaking in the Western culture. Now, even in Asian culture, we have all their names are uh, available in our daily life. In our daily life. Why? Why our God allow all these Babylonian gods' names? Uh, pervasive, spread all over uh, today's society. You know, major, uh, major government building names, government uh, program names, even military names, military program names, educational school names, and uh, commercial trade names, all the industrial, uh, you know, areas, uh, the companies uh, make their own company trade names, along with all these Babylonian names, where they believe that God's blessings be upon those names. It was, uh, you know, it was God's plan, okay? Uh, let human uh, society adopting all these Babylonian names without knowing themselves. Uh, it become part of our lives. Not knowing that you know, the person and, and company are under the, you know, influence of, you know, Babylonian God. Without realizing themselves, uh, they enjoy using all these Babylonian God's names. Although they said they are Christians, even, even Christian community uh, adopting all these names, mixed with their Christian uh, designations. And Christian gods and these Babylonian gods are all mixed and cannot make any distinctions. We are being cheated in many ways in these particular areas, okay? not knowing ourselves. All this one uh, tells us that this is the end time uh, 
before the second coming of Jesus, where we are under these Babylonian God's influences, predicted in Revelation chapter 13, two beast system, which we call anti-Christ uh, dominating time. In this particular area, we, we are now studying a, a Freemason, which has been uh, under the influence of this Babylonian gods. So for our better understanding, we just want to just go over briefly how the Babylonian various gods are now divided into these three parts and even, even separate each other from uh, Greek Empire and Roman Empire. We call it Greek myth mythology. Greek mythology. The secular people call these are the Greek, under the Greek mythology, all these names, and this is a Roman mythology. So they call it just it's a, a it's a mythical, mythical names, not a real name. It's a myth, myth, mythical names, okay, and philosophical names, and even cultural names. All these names are symbols or myth carrying the meaning okay, in the area of all our entire lives here. Okay. So it's a controlling name, governing name. You, okay, then that's the Jews and Jupiter. So when, when we... Our company uh, named Jupiter. That means, wow, we have power, authoritative company. Okay, so, okay, let's make our company name Jupiter or our nickname uh, Jupiter. Even Apollo, you know, you know, even the, uh, there are many Apollo names. Apollo means healing, prophecy. Even music, all this combined together. And Bacchus, that's meaning alcohol and also it's a strength, power, Bacchus. And medicine, names. And here, female gods, Athena, Minerva. This, this is even used that name, the Buddhist people are even using that name, Neruba. Okay? And many people like this Venus. Many people, that's a fe feminine, female name. That's a Venus, a lovely name. It's a Friday. A Lucifer also is related to that name. And Many people using Diana. Diana is a Artemis, is a moon god. It's a female moon god. Representing Monday. Monday is a moon god day. All under the Babylonian religion. So now our week names, Monday through Sunday, it's all Babylonian, Babylonian religion, God's names. That tells us our human history, our daily lives are under the deep, strong, direct influence of Babylonian religion, which God allow. So we call even, you know, Lord's Day called Sunday. Who is the sun? 
Nimrod. So we don't use sun, Sunday actually, the Lord's Day. We Christians call it the Lord's Day, but we got mixed up with it. You know, Roman Catholic, now here, our real Sabbath day is Saturday in the Old Testament, Sabbath. Okay, that's a Saturday under our week system. So, first century up to around fourth century, Christians worshipped on Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Saturday is where is the Saturn here? Saturn. It's the farming day. Saturday. That is Christian Sabbath day. But under the Babylonian religion, uh, Sunday, Sunday is sun. Sun means what? Nimrod, right? Sunday, in their tradition, in their belief system, Sunday is the is the day of Nimrod. Okay. Day of Nimrod, they said that the birthday of Nimrod, that is Sunday. So Babylonians consider the Sunday is their most holy day, holiest day, Sunday. Okay. Upon Roman Catholic adopted Christianity, which is 313, you remember that? Okay. Roman Catholic Church switched holiday from Saturday, which is a traditional Christian Sabbath day, to Sunday, which is, is Babylonian God's birthday, and their worshiping day, which is Sunday. So Roman Catholic made a big mistake. The reason was very clear that the Babylonian believing uh, Roman Catholic Church members previously, they are used to worship uh, their God on Sunday instead of Saturday. So in order to in order to accommodate their church members comfortable, so they decided to change Sabbath Saturday to their current youth, current Babylonian worshiping day Sunday to accommodate their people, okay, to make sure that they are comfortable with. Because of the Roman Catholic's decision over this matter, all the Christian community they are after, just comfortably, just naturally, just following that decision and their practices. Now, Jesus said in the New Testament day, he said this, I am the owner of Sabbath, Jesus said, okay? Which indicates to us that we are not, we are not particularly uh, observing any specific date as a Sabbath. Paul says in Colossians, he said that now, 365 days are Sabbath, uh, okay, among the Christians. So one day is not Sabbath. We are, we are considering every day in our life is a Sabbath, the day we are worshiping Jesus. Not only set out that one particular day for that worshiping Jesus. We are 
we ought to worship Jesus every day, counting 365 days in a year, treating Sabbath. For that reason, Sunday worship is okay. Saturday worship is okay. But now, today, Messianic Jews worshiping according to their uh, uh, teachings and their traditions based on the Old Testament, worshiping Saturday as their Sabbath. Even though they changed their religion from Judaism to Christianity, they still observing that particular Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. And also, Seventh-day Adventists, okay, they really believe, literally, what the Old Testament says, okay, the Saturday Sabbath. So they are denouncing Sunday Sabbath. But we, okay, accept them as they are, but we accept what is our interpretation of Sabbath? 365 days Sabbath. Because Jesus is the owner of Sabbath. Not only that particular day owner. He's 365 days. We worship Jesus. So we consider every day is Sabbath day. But because of that, this Babylonian inferences upon the Roman Catholic churches, they have changed Sabbath day. Not only that, Easter. Easter day. Easter means, Easter means, it's nothing to do with Christianity. There is a Babylonian language, Easter. Easter day is the worshiping their God, okay, day. So we don't, we should not call Easter, that's a Babylonian language. But Roman Catholics accommodated that language into their culture. So we just, without knowing ourselves, we're just following that false culture, unbiblical culture. So we call it, instead of Easter, we call Resurrection Day of Jesus. So now, this time, I'm just briefly uh, went over various names of Babylonian God that has been strong, very severely influenced uh, and permeated into our Christian culture. Okay, and as the second coming of coming near and near, that influences will be more severe. Yeah. More, it will be more confused among Christians. And Christians will use all these secular and Babylonian uh, deity systems without knowing ourselves and applying it into our daily life and even daily our weekly services. So we should be fully aware of this. Okay? Thank you, Jesus, for this teaching. May God bless you. Amen. Mm-hmm.